This is how to install a whole house iron filter, but if you're installing a water softener, it's basically the same process. So let's get started. Now if you're installing a whole house iron filter, it's probably because you have a well with rusty water. Um, I already have a softener installed in our house, but we still have rusty water, which is why I'm installing this. Now, your setup is going to be different from mine. I have copper pipe and then I have PEX pipe. I'm going to be tying into the PEX pipe. So the materials you need to buy need to fit your system, but I'll put links for everything down in the description. But it's not a lot of tools. Even if you're tying into the copper, you probably just need a shark bite. Let me go get one. You probably just need a shark bite connector that looks like this. This will snap into the copper, snap into the PEX. Can't be simpler. However, for the rest of the PEX system, you can use a small, cheaper fitting like this. It just pushes onto the PEX pipe and you clamp it on. PEX is really easy to use. The first time I used it was on this water filter system here. Zero leaks. I'm super happy with how it turned out. You need to decide where you're going to install this. I'm installing this right over there. So this is where I'm going to be installing the tank. You can see this is my problem I'm having right now. But you can see I'm changing this once a month. One thing I did beforehand was install this outlet. Uh, you're going to need to plug this in somewhere. Step one, after you have the tank located where you want it to go, uh, the media and riser tube are already installed in here, so you remove that cap, and then you put this deflector plate in. Another thing I forgot to mention is check to make sure your tank is level, but you can pick the tank up and kind of drop it a few times till it seats itself on that bottom ring. Uh, the next step is going to be installing this control head. So the electronic head that does all the work. There's two O-rings in there, a large one and a small one. And you have to use this food safe grease. But you're going to be lubricating this outer ring and then the two O-rings on the control head. Alright, it looks like I didn't push this ring down far enough. I forced it down. It said one or two inches, but... It is pretty tight on there and I don't want to break it, so I'm... Okay, there it kind of popped. Alright, that seems far enough. Now I can get to all the threads, so make sure this is pushed down far enough. You make sure that that inner pipe, that deflector pipe, the down tube, goes on that o-ring. And then you can tighten this down. And you don't want to over tighten this. It doesn't have to be very tight at all. Get it snug and then give it one little more turn. So that's snug there. I'm just going to kind of hold it and there. That's it. The next step is connecting this uh, bypass valve. Um, there's already these little metal plates installed there. You just have to loosen the screws to install them. So you don't have to take these screws all the way out, just right to the edge, and you should be able to push on this bypass valve. Maybe not. Maybe you do have to take one side off. So push it till it's nice and seated. Then tighten it back down. The next part that goes on is this threaded yoke, it's called. And they give you two, uh, three quarter inch and one inch. Now, all my pipes are three quarter inch, so that's what I'm gonna be using. And this goes on the same way. Just pushes on and then you tighten up these little metal clips on the end. Push it till it's nice and seated. And there's that O-ring in the middle. And then tighten the screws up. Next to go on, they call it a barb fitting. This is the drain line. It's up here on the, on the back. And before you put it on, they suggest three or four wraps. And from what I found, you can't put too much of this stuff. They say three or four. When I did all these fittings here on uh, these units, I was doing 10 or 12 before I got something that didn't leak. This isn't as important as that. This is just a drain line, but I'm doing more than three or four wraps. And they say don't over tighten it. They're both plastic fitting. The next step it says is connect a half inch drain line using some hose clamps. And that was not provided in the kit, so I had to buy half inch drain tube. I did have some hose clamps around, but this is something you're going to have to buy. So this is going to connect to this and run to the floor drain. Okay, we have our half inch hose run to the drain. 
give yourself a little bit of slack. I found it was easier to start at the drain and work back this way. And you can just use any type of wire cutters. Cut the hose. Put your hose clamp on first, which everyone always forgets, including myself. Press it on and then tighten the hose clamp down. The next step is to connect your plumbing lines to the unit. Again, I have PEX and I'm going to use PEX because you really only need two tools. One tool to cut the PEX pipe and one tool to crimp it together. Again, you might need a shark bite fitting if you're going to connect to a copper or uh, PEX itself. That's an easy thing. The only thing I needed to buy was this, which is 3 quarter PEX to 3 quarter inch uh, NIF. Now, I am lucky in fact that I can could shut off all the water to this with these two valves. So closing that and that, now there's no water getting to these pipes. But you should always know where the whole, your whole house water shutoff is. So I'm going to take these cutters and cut through the PEX pipe down here, um, not hitting any of the, the connectors. Now I can actually cut this one up here as well. Getting these PEX connectors off can be a bit of a pain. You need to take a screwdriver, pry this loose, and you pull that out. You then take a utility knife and cut as much as you can through. I then took these uh, wire cutters and snipped it right there and that popped it open enough for this to pull right off. And just to note, this has been here for about four or five years and inside these pipes are tons of rust. So I'm hoping to get rid of all this rust that's going through these pipes. Now I'm getting ready to make this connection uh, on the back with this connector here. That'll go from the threaded to PEX. And I'm going to do about uh, 10, 12, 14 wraps of this Teflon tape. And ideally you can wrap it in a direction that when you tighten it, it will also tighten the tape, but it doesn't really matter. Tighten that down with a crescent wrench and then we can start uh, building out our peck. So I'm going to set this one first. So we need enough room for that 90 and a section of pipe to come to here. To show you how easy PEX is, here's the first fitting. You slide it on, then you slide on your clamp. You get it roughly centered on that fitting. Then you take this tool here, push it on, and just squeeze the clamp. It will not release until it's all the way tight. And there you go. One fitting done. There you go. Two connections done. Trying to get this S shape. Don't want to damage it or anything. I'm just lightly heating it. That should be better. You can see all the PEX is connected. That took about 45 minutes to measure and cut everything and kind of bend it to fit. Don't turn the water on yet and make sure the bypasses are shut so there's no water going to get to the system. Plug it in. So it's, it starts with time. You hold up and down together and it will go through all of these different settings and I just uh, according to the sheet and I am set it and then press the setting RT 2 o'clock. So I just go through and set these settings and then I can set the time. Okay, now that everything's set on the tank, I'm going to slowly add water. The bypass is still closed. I'm going to slowly... Now it says slowly open the inlet side, which is this side, water coming in, which is this side, water coming in. Uh, the inlet uh, port 
as you're facing the unit is on the right, there's actually arrows on this bypass uh, plastic unit as well. So the water's gonna come in this side, but with PEX, it's actually really easy. Having said that, I probably jinxed myself and something's gonna go terribly wrong. Which I completely screwed up. I put the inlet on the outlet side, so I have to flip these around. You always gotta screw something up. This is where the water comes in. Unfortunately, the inlet side is this one here. You can see the arrow right down here. So I need to put this pipe on this side and this pipe on that side. Well, a half an hour later and here we are again. And this uh, shows why I like PEX pipe so much. I screwed up and it took me half an hour to fix. If this was copper, I would have to unsolder uh, everything with this. I cut it, I pop those connections, I can bend this pipe over the other one. It's so uh, flexible and versatile and you can change it and it's easy to work with. So this would have taken, I would have just given up today if this was copper. But with PEX you just cut it, reclamp it, and you can bend it like this connection here. I could just bend it right over the pipe. So let's try it again. Um, bypasses are closed, let's add water. I don't see anything leaking, which is great. Whenever, every time I use copper, everything leaks. Now we are ready to open the inlet bypass side, which is this one. So slowly opening, opening the inlet bypass side, and I'm gonna check when it fills up if this seam holds tight. Okay, I can hear it pretty much full of water. It says, turn the inlet back off and let this sit for 24 hours. So we're gonna have to come back tomorrow. I'm just checking and listening, hearing hissing noises, making sure that's all as it should be and nothing's leaking out. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Uh, hopefully all that media is settled down in there. I'm gonna turn on the water slowly. And then it says, open the inlet. And then it says press and hold the far left button to do a backwash and let it run for one hour. It says BW, so the backwash is running. After one hour of doing the backwash, I'm gonna open the outlet. I can see it's already draining water out here. I'll know this worked if in one month I come back and this filter is not rusty. These get this rusty every month. So if I come back in a month and it's clean, We'll know it's working. So, I hope this helps. Thanks.